You can keep your fancy ales, you can drink them by the flagon, and the only brew for the brave and true comes from the Black Mighty Mimic. So, this story takes place about two years ago. I was DMing for uh, two of my friends, and one of them was a homebrew witcher class, and the other one was a human monk, because he had never played a monk before. It's some random world that I just kind of whipped up one day, because they were asking me to make a, a campaign, and I was like, sure, why not? They get to a point where they accept a quest that kind of ties into the main storyline. Now, the main plot isn't important right now, but the quest that they took is about going into the nearby forest and cleansing it of some some bad juju that was causing the animals and the plants to die and come back as these undead monstrosities. So they go into the forest, and it's all dark and spooky, and they get lost a couple of times before they find this strange cottage in the deepest, darkest depths of the forest. They go to the cottage, and they find that a beautiful young woman lives there, just by herself, communing with nature and whatnot, totally not suspicious. And they, uh, they're they invited inside, and they start talking with her, and she feeds them, and they try to learn if she knows anything about the forest. Near the end of the conversation, they figure out that there's something off about her. She's either hiding something, or there's something that she doesn't quite know, but there's there's something going on. After she excuses herself to go to the bathroom, they take the opportunity to search her house, and lo and behold, she's a werewolf. Now, the Witcher, he's got a flaw that basically says that he will hunt any monster to the ends of the earth, because it is a sworn duty to fight monsters, yada yada yada, but the monk, well, the monk was still focusing on the goal, so the Witcher decided to drag the monk along and go kill the werewolf, completely ignoring about the, completely ignoring the forest. Get to a cave near the edge of the forest, and as they enter the cave, I decide to roll on the random encounter chart. And I roll the dice, I look at my little cheat sheet, and I describe as a strange clump of fur falls from the ceiling onto the witcher, and it's quickly followed by a sharp pain in his shoulder as he feels teeth sinking past his armor. The monk punches the patch of fur, and it's quickly realized that it is a giant weasel. After they quickly kill the weasel, the witcher asks the question, Can I take the giant weasel carcass with me? At the time, I thought, well, sure, why not? And he scoops it up off the ground and drapes it over his shoulders like a bloody, horrible mink fur coat. I would come to regret this decision. We flash forward to the werewolf fight, and the monk is feeling a little useless, as the werewolf, as most werewolves do, have resistance to all damage that is not silvered or magical. The monk's fisticuffs are neither of those. However, the witcher, as part of his starting gear, starts with a silver sword. So the monk is kind of just standing there as, as the witcher starts hacking at the werewolf, doing a moderate amount of damage as a level one character gets a werewolf can do. So the monk decides to help by grappling the werewolf. And a shitty roll from me, and he pulls it off for six turns. So imagine your frustration as a DM as you see the players fighting the boss fight as the monk holds the werewolf in a chokehold and the witcher just slashes at it because it can't do anything and he has advantage. The werewolf bites the monk on the arm and I tell the monk to make a constitution saving throw. He fails it and unbeknownst to him, he has now contracted lycanthropy. Flash forward to after the fight and the next night, the monk has a dream. In the dream, he is standing before a wolf's den, where the wolves are all looking at him with quiet and intense eyes. Behind him is the howling wilderness, and he is told he must choose between going with the pack or going by himself into the strange and an unknown. He chooses the unknown, and I describe as he is forcefully changed while in his bed, causing a commotion and a ruckus as he tears through his blankets and crashes through the window with a crash. The Witcher and a couple mercenaries follow behind him before he can kill anyone, and now the Witcher faces a dilemma. He could easily kill the monk, but he doesn't want to. He just wants to knock out his friends so they can talk about this in the morning. So, what does he do? He decides to use the carcass as an improvised weapon. 
Now, it's worth noting that I was still learning 5th edition rules, so I didn't quite understand fully what improvised weapons were supposed to do, if they were even a thing. So I treated the carcass as something that I figured was equal size and could deal equal damage. I went with 1d6 plus strength bludgeoning damage. So I'm just watching as the Witcher wails on the werewolf with this carcass over and over, somehow getting, I believe, two critical hits during the fight. So it was kind of an example of how creative a player can be when you back him into a corner. And the, the lesson here is to not underestimate your players when you give them the tools for creativity. 